Hello, I'm Megan Davis. I'm a research professor at Florida Atlantic University, Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. And I'm an aquaculturist. I've been working with the Queen Conch aquaculture for over 40 years now. And I'm very excited to be showing you our Puerto Rico Queen Conch hatchery with our partners here at the Fishing Association and Conservation Conciencia, which is supported by NOAA Fisheries. We've been working with Carlos and the fishers here in the Navajo Fishing Association for about five years now. So we've had several collaborations and they've really been very successful. Uh, just really listening to them, how we can further integrate them into our conservation projects and to our research projects. The first step that you have to always think about when you're establishing a Queen Conch aquaculture farm or hatchery and nursery is where is your hatchery going to be located. It can't be inland, you can't make your own salt water, you have to find a site that has salt water in place. And so here we are at Hukaris Beach in Naguabo at the Fishing Association and we happen to be on a beautiful bay here where we pump our salt water. We don't have a permanent line here, we have a temporary line that we use. And we pump that water about every two to three weeks into a reservoir. Now I'm gonna show you where our water goes to on the days that we do the pumping. And so we store our water in a reservoir. So let's go ahead and go that way. Okay, now that our reservoir tank is full, the next step is to be able to start using the seawater. And here we go, here's the one inch pipe that comes from the bottom of the reservoir tank. It comes through this pump here. This pump pumps at about 15 to 20 gallons a minute. So now, here we go from the pump up into the filters. The filters here are what cleans up the water. We have a 100 micron, we have a 25, and we have a five. And they're all in series, so the water has to go through one before it can go through the other. And it continues like that. So now that we've left the filter system, I've been talking about water going up. The water's actually going up into the UV unit. So after our water goes through the ultraviolet sterilizer, then it starts to make its way around the rest of the circular system. But I want to show you something here. So it comes through the ultraviolet up high, and you can see that valve's open, and you can see this line here. This is the line that goes into the hatchery. Okay, I'm going to show you around our aquaculture facility for raising the Queen Conch. We're gonna start here in the corner. This is our larval area. This is where we raise the villagers. The villagers are in these 68 liter tanks for 21 days. We do do water changes throughout those 21 days. We have five tanks here. Then as we start moving around the room, this is our egg incubator. We can hold up to eight egg masses. It just so happens that we have eight in here today. And then as we continue to move around the room, this is our metamorphosis area. We have shallow tanks here. We have trays here. We're a new hatchery, so we're not quite ready to metamorphose. It's gonna be in about another 10 days we'll have larvae in these systems ready to metamorphose. But I did wanna show you that we have two tanks here and that this system will also be on its own recirculating system. So then we leave from metamorphosis area I just want you to see that we have a cleaning station here. And from the cleaning station, this is our microalgae area. We have the flasks that we use to feed the larvae, the villagers. We have more flasks that we use for scaling up. So this area is devoted to microalgae, along with being able to scale up and grow algae in these what we call sun tubes that can be used to flocculate algae to feed to the metamorphous conch. I also want to let you know that storage is quite limited in this hatchery because it is a small hatchery. So down below the algae area, we've devoted an area where we can have our supplies that we need on hand. We also have a refrigerator in the laboratory that's very important. We use it to store media that we have for the microalgae. We also have a freezer capacity. The freezer right now doesn't have anything in it, but as we continue our culturing process, we'll be making food for the juvenile conch and we can store it in the freezer. We have a microwave. You might be wondering why we have a microwave. We have the microwave to help sterilize the media culture so that it gets ready for inoculation of microalgae. 
So we have a cleaning station over here. We have to clean glassware. So it's nice to have a sink that has both salt water and fresh water plumbed to it. You can see that we don't use a typical household handles for fresh water and salt water because they would actually rust. So we use PVC instead with PVC um, Tygon tubing. And then we have our sink here. I love laundry sinks. They're perfect for the laboratory. That way they won't rust at all. And then we have our working station here. Our working station allows us to have two microscopes, both a compound microscope for counting algae cells, and then we also have our dissecting microscope that we can use for observations for eggs and also for larvae. This space is a multi-use space. We need to make sure that in any hatchery that we have a dry working space where we can do inoculations of algae, where we can do data work, where we can do our microscope work. That wraps up our tour of the hatchery, but you might be wondering how many conch can this hatchery produce? Our goal is to produce 2,000 juvenile conchs that are this size that are about seven to eight centimeters. So the hatchery produces more larvae than that. We can produce, let's say, 10,000 larvae in order to get the 2,000 juvenile conchs because they all go through different stages and there is some mortality along the way, but the hatchery actually increases survival significantly compared to what's in the wild.